Hi, this is Ms. Zoo, and we're going to get started on our video worksheet for tonight. And just a reminder that we did just take a test today, and so yes, you have to watch this video and do homework, but we won't have homework on Friday. So here we go. Make sure that you always try to work on the worksheet first. You know, just spend five or ten minutes, and then we'll go over the video together, and you'll get the most out of the work giving you a little preview because I won't stop in the video to read the question together with you. All right, our first example here, and today we're going to be talking about ratios as fractions and also unit rates. So we're going to continue our discussion about uh, ratios and unit rates, but specifically with fractions. So it is important that we um, you spend a little bit of time reviewing some fractions and that would be addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So here we go. Izzy ran two and one fourth mile. That took him 15 minutes. Then we have Julia. She ran three and three fourths mile, and it took her 25 minutes. Now each of the girls are thinking, well, they're fast. One is faster than the other. But we want to see which girl is actually correct. Now if we were to make a ratio, of these two fractions, then the ratio that we're going to create is going to be their miles over their minutes. So let's first take Izzy, let's call that I, and she is going to have a two and a quarter mile that is going to take her 15 minutes. I'm sorry, I am working off a new laptop and the stylus is actually quite squishy and so the <laughs> writing is not as great as my old laptop here. And then we have her friend Julia who is running three and three quarters of a mile out of 25 minutes. Now of course these numbers and fractions are quite difficult to work with but you can see that really the takeaway here is knowing how to create these ratios. This fraction is important. This fraction. Now how do I know that I am writing miles in the numerator and minutes in the denominator? Well, typically in our numerator, that's going to be our y, and in our denominator is going to be our x, just like when we talked about our k our y in the numerator and x in the denominator. That is our independent, dependent variable over our independent variable. And if we're talking about uh, miles per minute, then that makes more sense than minutes per mile. Does it make sense to have minutes per mile? Not so much. So that is why we use miles per minute. And I also said that typically when we have an x variable, then we, if we have to deal with uh, time, then typically time is represented, whether it's minutes or seconds or hours in y, x variable, and in our y variable, we have, and typically for y, if we see money, then um, it's usually going to be the outcome, which is why it's our dependent variable. Okay, and sometimes that cost is dependent on time, sometimes the cost is dependent on the weight of an item, or the number of items, <coughs> or whatever it happens to be that you're paying for. All right, let's continue down here. And let's go ahead and we can use our calculator to just find that. Now in our calculator, we aren't going to be able to use a fraction, so we need to know that what a quarter is as a decimal. And does anybody know what that is as a decimal? And a great way to remember is it's a quarter. And the worth of a quarter is point twenty-five. Whoa. Sorry. Point twenty-five. So here we have two point twenty-five miles over fifteen. Wow, this <laughs> writing, sorry, is so poor. Then we have three and three fourths. Three fourths as a decimal. Does anybody know what that is? And it's like saying three quarters. So it's good to relate fractions um, to money to help us. So three quarters is worth how much? 
right? 75 cents, so 0.75. So we have 3 and 3 quarters, which means we have 3.75. And in our calculator, we're going to divide that by 25. If you have your calculator, please try that. You're also welcome to divide that yourself. If you don't have a calculator, no, don't worry about it. Go ahead and just divide that, just like that. Remember, the number on the top goes in the box. So we're putting 2.25 in the box, 15 outside. Okay. So I don't even have to use a calculator. I'm going to go ahead and not use one if I, since I don't have one. All right, and it was actually quite a simple division. So I got 0.15 miles per minute. I'm going to try that to see what Julia ran in her miles per minute. 3.75 divided by 25. I also got 0.15 miles per minute. Awesome. Okay. So actually nobody ran faster than the other. They actually ran the same rate. And one just ran longer. Oops, I'm sorry. Okay, that's definitely one way. Of course, you know, when I looked at the problem, another way that I was trying to compare them was to make the 15 minutes into uh, 60 minutes. I wanted to try to see if I can compare it by per hour. Um, but 25 minutes didn't really have anything, a number that I can go evenly to sort of multiply up into 60 minutes. So I just decided to simply show you the method that you could do for any problem regardless of the values that you get. So the strategy I just showed you by writing them as ratios is going to be the method that will work all the time in any question that you approach. So let's go ahead and look at our first exercise problem. We have our little turtle that's walking three seven eighths of a mile. That's going to take him 50 minutes. And we want to use a unit rate expressed in miles per hour. So it's already telling us to create a fraction that is going to have miles whoops, miles over the number of hours. That's the ratio that we want. So let's work on A. To find the hours, we're going to um, see, well, she's done some work here, and we're going to see if the fraction that she got was correct. So she put 7 eighths, and she wrote that over 50 minutes, and she said that fi 5 eighths, 50 minutes, and she wrote, instead of 50 minutes, she wrote 5 6. Now, is that correct for her to use that fraction? Um, well, since the ratio that they're telling me to write it should have hours, I have minutes. So I need to change the 50 minutes to hours. How can I change 50 minutes to hours? Well, first of all, we know that 50 minutes is only a fraction of an hour, which means that it's a part of an hour. You know, it's not a full hour, it's less than an hour, because one hour has 60 minutes. So what we could do is take the 50 minutes, put it over 60 minutes, because that's the full hour, and then if I simplify this fraction, I can do that easily by crossing out the zeros, which gives me 5, 6. So, and let me go ahead and explain over here. Explain. So that is simply our fraction that we could definitely use in place of the 50 minutes. We can express that as 5 sixths of an hour. So she did it correct. You're right, Meredith. All right, and let's go ahead and look at B. Um, did she simplify her? Oh, we just answered B. Yes, because 50 minutes out of 60 minutes 
is a part of one hour and it's if you divide by 10 in the numerator and denominator, so we're going to divide here and here, we get 5 fifths. I am so sorry. This I'm going to buy a new stylus because the writing is terrible. Uh, let's look at 2. Anthony's birthday. He's making 12 cupcakes. Now we're looking at two and a half dozen cookies that is made by having three and a fourth cup of flour. And so we need to make just one dozen. Now we can make two and a half dozen, but we only need one dozen. So the ratio that we're going to create is that we need one dozen out of the 2.5 dozen cookies that it's going to produce. If I take my calculator and divide 1 with 2.5 or simply do 1 in the numerator, the numerator, so the number at the top goes in the box. So if I were to divide that, I'm going to move my decimal once, and what I will get is 0.4. So I need a fourth, or 0.4, 40% of the cup of flour that is total. So I'm going to take three and a quarter and multiply that by 0.4. Okay. Or what I could have also done is take three and a quarter and multiply by this fraction that I have um, right here with the decimal in it. Um, you know, probably don't prefer to, but you know, using our calculators because this is going to be the most helpful for us is to go ahead and multiply that 3.25 remember we said that a quarter is also 25 it's like a quarter in money so 3.25 I'm going to multiply by that by 0.4 because I only want 0.4 of the recipe which is a which is a four tenths of the recipe so if I'm going to do that and take a part of the recipe I have to multiply which gives me uh, that I need 1.3 cups of flour and that's definitely not going to be enough. Now I know this question is a little challenging um, to understand and so definitely in class if you need any more help we can kind of I can try to explain it in a different way but we do need this much flour and so there's not enough flour to even make a dozen cookies, 12 cookies for the friends. Alright, here we have set. Uh, here they're mixing paint and A is the, uh, sure, telling us to find the unit rate. We all know how to find the unit rate now and we can do that for each of them which just requires us to write ratios. Um, let's go ahead and write uh, ratios with y over x. So we're going to take the red as x because it's in the first column and blue as y because it's in the second column and we like our ordered pairs to be in that specific order x and then y. So if I were to write two and a half over one and a half, put that in my calculator as 2.5 divided by 1.5, I will get 1.6 and the calculator will actually round it to wherever it ends but it's going to be a repeating 1.6. If you divide um, the rest of the numbers here in your calculator, then you can see that each of them are going to be 1.6 repeating, 1.6 repeating. So that's our unit rate, 1.6 repeating, blue per red. And we want to look at B, if that paint is proportional, yes, it's a constant rate. And then in other ways to describe it, we can say that it has a constant of proportionality. And if it's graph, we can see that it produces a straight line and thus has a proportional relationship. So again, this, is, this question really is a summary of everything we've been covering before. So I'll talk more detail about it in class. And you're welcome to work on the problems that yourself, but we will do it in class tomorrow. See you tomorrow.